Welcome to Breaking Down Bits, a conversation about great comedy bits with the comedians who wrote and performed them. Hey, welcome to Breaking Down Bits. This is Brian Gendron. I'm Drew Jordan, and we're just we're just pumped to this thing is still happening. We we made a goal that we're going to get through ten episodes, and we are we're closer than ever to actually hitting that goal. Man, we are still here, and better than that, we are learning along the way. Uh, let's get right into callbacks. Uh, we, last week we had Sarah Tolomash on. That was incredible, man. What'd you think? What'd you learn? I mean, there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, pretty obvious takeaway for me was in the middle of all this stuff. Um, you've got to use social media. You've got to be putting content out on Twitter. Use that as a as a joke machine. Create a YouTube channel. I think we're one of the reasons this podcast exists is kind of trying to fill in that gap. So if you're, I think, if you're a comic right now and you're struggling to find stage time and shows, man, we've got to learn to really um, to leverage the the ability, the power of the internet for sure. Like this, it's not an option anymore. Absolutely. And you know what? You're unfortunately, you're kind of late to the game. You should have already been doing those things already. But of course, you know, everybody's focused on getting stage time, getting on stage. I get it. Nobody expected a pandemic. Right. right. But what you can do in place of that, and this is going to suck because it's about to get possibly uh, made illegal, but take advantage of the next emerging platform. Right. So then you get on the TikTok, you get on whatever. It doesn't, there's going to be something new Insta face. Who knows what it's going to be, but there's going to be a new platform coming out. Be one of the leaders on that. Right. And lead yeah. the charge. So take advantage of that. I couldn't agree more, Drew. What the one thing. Oh, man. The one thing that stuck with me. Seven minutes is what she said. Once you have a tight seven minutes, get your ass to New York, get your ass to LA, get out of your market and go out there and, and grind, right? Yeah. That's what she said, man. I, you know, she's like, I didn't do it early enough. And she said, it's going to suck because it's expensive to live in those places. Of course, you don't want to do it right now. And, and Nori, our, our guest is, is sitting there like, don't come here. Mm -mm, don't do it. <laughs> you don't want to do that. But but no, but when, whenever this thing passes, right, get your ass there and just grind it out. You're going to work a day job. You're going to be up late. It's going to suck for a few years, but you got to be where the industry is. In yeah. addition to social, like, like you said. Like Slightly controversial take, perhaps, but I think it's a great conversation to have and something that I think a lot, a lot of comics are talking about. Like, when do I know it's time for me to move to a bigger market, or what's the? Yeah, you know, I think that's just a question that we all kind of think of. If you're trying to make it in stand up, we know that L.A., New York is where everyone goes. That's where all the bookings take place. So, yeah, that, that's it's tough to hear that, but it, I think it's good for my brain to start like processing, like, okay. Let, this is something to keep in, in mind for sure as we move forward. All right. So listen, you go out and get all those episodes wherever you get your podcast, whether it's Apple, Google, Spotify, off the street. I don't care where you get it. It's at breakingdownbits.com. Yeah, get them bootleg. Uh, you get it on YouTube where you get the video version of it. Uh, breakingdownbits.com is your place to get all of that. Drew, what do you say we meet our guests? Let's do it. We got a little intro video so we can get to know our guest today, Mr. Nori Davis. Nori Davis started doing stand-up comedy during his teenage years while living in Yonkers, New York. He's made television appearances on Russell Simmons Presents, Last Week Tonight, HBO's Boardwalk Empire, and many videos on college humor. Davis released his second comedy album, Too Woke, and it was named one of the top 10 best comedy albums of 2018 by Vulture. All right, my man, Nori hey. Davis, you there? Yeah, man, I like that intro. Sounds like I died. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, he's back, baby, with that whole Western Western background. It's like, yeah, he died, but he's back with a vintage now. He got a fucking horse. <laughs> <laughs> and Welcome back to life, man. Thank you. Yeah. It's good to be back. I do want to apologize. I had to pull some of the facts off Wiki. They might not all be 100% oh, no, true, but they're close. They're at least close. Perfect. All that shit happened, dog. All of it. And and then so. And then so. I love it, dog. Wiki, Wiki doesn't know me, but what's facts? <laughs> <laughs> this is America, baby. <laughs> facts are whatever you make it. True. That, that's the that's the 
the thing we learned in 2020 for sure is that facts are all flexible. That's right. Hell yeah. So we just trying to be what's the funniest fucking un fucking fact there is that yeah. we're going to do that entertains us and we just keep moving and keep living. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. So thanks for having me on though, man. This yeah, is fire. Thank you. Up. Appreciate it. You have a very, uh, if what is on at all, you have a very interesting story mm. and uh, we're excited to get into that. Maybe, maybe just a little bit here in a second. Yeah. And, and I don't, I don't know, Drew, if you've had a chance to listen to it yet, you see that Nori. So he released a hey, album. Man during quarantine and over zoom over zoom so i'd love to hear we're going to dig into that a little bit later in the show as well so you can see it down there you get out and listen to it i listen to it on spotify uh so you can get out there and stream that where else can they people find that oh, it's on all streaming platforms anything uh, they got wherever they listen to music to just type in nori davis and i'll pop up so yeah amazon uh pandora uh apple itunes title um all of them google play <laughs> doing it perfect okay good so get out there and listen to it. it's very funny and we'll talk about we're actually going to look at some of the jokes from that from that album here in a little bit nice uh well do you want to start off with just a, a little bit about how you, how did you kind of make the move like where you really kind of popped off here in the last few years really showing up in a lot of big places um, what led you from being, you know, just like a, a regular everyday comic kind of grinding it out in New York to like really coming into these big opportunities? Uh, what happened that, that led you down that road and, and got you there? Um, well, I mean, I appreciate you seeing my big opportunities as like big opportunities. I see them as just like the everyday grind of just trying to get my uh, voice out there and reach as many people as possible and give them joy, give them laughter, give them a break from the reality. I think it is the art form is stand up is a beautiful art form, which is competitive within itself. But it's a positive competing of like, hey, my brand of comedy could give you a release from all this madness of the world. And so check it out. And then that's it. Go on with your life. So it's still on that continued journey. And uh, I feel like that's my form of protest. That's my form of life. It, what brings me joy and it, it's it's exciting when you wake up in the morning and you're like oh let me figure out the bid or like how can i try to translate my voice in my head to give other people joy and um they don't teach us that in high school or anything so i'm trying to say that shit now so kids can know but kids usually i guess that's something i can't control because like everybody has their own journey but it's like that's the main reason of life right there, man. Just trying to figure out what makes you happy. Just like you guys doing this whole show. Like you guys are smiling. You guys are into that shit. It's like, it's dope. <laughs> it's like, this is my purpose. This is what feels good. And I think that's what we all just need to figure out. And mine is stand up, stand up comedy. You got to be, so I'm, I'm feeling the passion come out of you talked about joy and, and it's what gets you up in the morning. That's passion. Yeah. And there's so many comics that clog up some of these mics that are just there to party. They ain't there for the passion, man. They're there, they're there to, to get to the party. Right? Yeah. And yeah. so, you, but so you, you do got to work, but you got to just remind yourself why you're in it. And sometimes you don't even have to, if you're bringing joy to people, that's, that feels good to you. And, that, and you want more of that and you want to be able to give more of that. So that that's very sage advice. Yeah, man. Thanks. I, I feel like no matter what, we're all nerds of comedy and like we're the bigger nerds are the ones that actually do it. And then there's other conglomerate nerds that like don't know how to actually physically perform, but they know how to put it together. They know how to do a producer show. They know how to get the right pieces. They know who to talk to the right people. So I feel like we all are in this world. And you guys are like the piece that are like teaching other like young comics and and yourself perform and telling like, hey, this is this is how you do it. The blueprints are out there. So now it's like study the blueprints and then figure out your own. Yeah, it's really I think it, that's that to me, that's one of the most important parts is like comedy is a, is a lot of self-expression. It's mm -hmm. not, I found um, through Scott Dicker's book, the guy who co-created The Onion, we had chatted with him for a little bit. And one of his things was he nice. he had trouble with like friendships and relationships. He wasn't the best at that but he felt like he best connected with people through creating. And I was like, yeah. Oh, that's me. I'm a total, I'm weird. I'm not great at, you know, personal relationships all the time. You know, I don't know how to handle that. I need, I'm such an introvert, but through comedy and through creating, I can, I can share who I am more freely than any other method. And I was like, wow, that the fact that he kind of called that out felt good to me. 
Facts, man. Facts. That's that's um. What's the name of the book? I probably even heard marketing of it. Marketing outrageously. Oh no, I never heard of that. Outrageous yeah, marketing. Outrageous marketing. Yeah, outrageous marketing. That is actually, I have both books. There's two books by those both names. I've got both of them. Oh man, that's great. Yeah, I really wish I was into books more, but uh, <laughs> I really do. audio books. I don't read with my eyes. I really try audio books, man. My brain, my inner voice just starts talking about other things and it's not listening. So now it's just <laughs> white noise. I'm like, I just missed a whole page. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> it does have, you got to hit that rewind button every now Yeah. Now. I got to figure out how can I consume. Well, I know how I consume it, but like audio books has been, I thought, uh, it'd be, I thought it'd be a great solution to my brain, but it was like, ah, yeah, right. Nigga. You do not. Your brain, uh, your brain is loud in there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it that OG. OG, I like it. HD, HD, D. Oh, nice. I like it that you you show you talked about us being nerds. We are. We're joke nerds. It's what we're doing here. We're comedy nerds. We want to know how it works. And then and then our job is is as comics is to show up and be relatable. And by default, nerds aren't relatable. They're nerdy. Uh, and and you and so you know you have to figure out a way to communicate that. And therein lies the writing, right? How do we communicate this uh, our our thoughts in a way that we can connect to this audience and bring them joy yep. and that it takes time. It takes reps. It takes, it takes a lot of uh, uh, understanding of how jokes work, but also practice on stage, which we're not getting right now. Mm-hmm. We, uh, which is kind of leads me into what I wanted to chat with you. Uh, we want to chat with you about was the, the album that you put out and, uh, and just about zoom comedy in general. So uh, I, a lot of these jokes clearly were, were worked on stage uh, and some of them were, were about, the, the situation that we're in. So they had to be written in quarantine mm-hmm. uh, leading up to this. You've been doing zoom shows. Uh, t- tell us what went into this album and preparing for this album. I'm sure it was different than your normal uh, comedy record. It, it really came together all through timing. I was going through a toxic relationship breakup in quarantine um, <laughs> and, and doing the shows at the same time. So like co- the comedy on zoom was actually a relief for me to like express myself because you know, the virus took away the stage. It took away the stage and took away so many people's lives. So we were stuck there. And so, you know, as an artist, we just have to conform to our environment and stop complaining. Cause I was complaining about like, ah, I'm just going to wait. This virus is going to like, it'll calm down. And it got really bigger than expected. So it was just like finally accepting the, <laughs> the, the bad Uno car hands that I have to use as a metaphor is like, it's time to play this fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> see if i can get out of here uno game so uh the breakup i moved to um do quarantine through a studio in brooklyn I'm, we're hanging with my best friend there and then you know we start still doing more of the the comedy trap out zoom shows so basically it would be uh, a dj in the beginning it would be a, a feature comedian and then it would be me doing 30 minutes and i would do like probably one or two of those in the weekend and from there i was able to build material and also do probably like three bits from I did when I was performing on stage in New York. So majority of all of it, I'll say 75% of the album is all in quarantine within those three months of performing uh, those bits on zoom to my fans who are out there on, you know, Instagram, which is good Instagram or Facebook, whatever your platform is. We, uh, I was able to contact those people, reach them and get them into a, a, uh zoom and it was about I, I capped it at 20 so it can definitely protect my ego for not like having no, anybody show up because <laughs> like doing doing zoom shows with like four people in there just four windows or even two is just as painful as performing for open mic for one person or even a show for three people or a college gig so the same effects that we perform on stand up or in the world is the same as online. So it's like, all right, it, it works. It works. We don't have to be so hesitant or ignorant to the Internet for being able to transfer stand up, actual stand up comedy online. Like cause I love what com- uh, uh, online comedians do. Even that term, online community, the fuck is that? We're all that. Well, but like, uh, you know, you know, talking about um, comedy. Um, uh, Instagram comedians like them, right? So like it worked to hear the bits develop, to hear people laugh. It was just different timing and a different texture of laughter. And it was it was beautiful, man. So then I my label, I went to them, like, hey, I have this crazy idea, try to do an album quarantine. He's like, Yeah, let's do it. And and we figured out Zoom, the engineering behind it, and we have a great engineer named Craig. 
uh, for out of San Francisco. He really put it together of like really getting the laughs in there. And and those are all actual laughs of people Zoom. And it would just create this ripple effect on the album. And because one person would laugh and the other person would, then would just hear them laugh. Like, yeah, that is funnier than I thought. And, <laughs> and then they laughed too. And it was just this wave of laughter, man. And that's how it, uh, that's how it all came together. The end. I'm back, baby. I'm not dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was wondering, yeah, so so you don't have the uh, in the room, you know, gaining laughter effect, but you but it's a rolling effect. So you still think that it existed just in a different form over the Internet uh, from people, yeah. I, I imagine, across the country. Right. These weren't just yeah. people here in New York. Have Which, people from Brazil, Paris, oh, from across the world. Yeah, uh, and this yeah. guy from uh, Leb- Lebanon. I remember, like, because I, I would do Insta stories, and he's saying, like, "Oh yeah, man, I'll read this." But right now, it's like three in the morning now, and I'm like, "Oh my god, I didn't even know that." Like, that's so cool. So, yeah, you can reach internationally, and and that's who I had in the room. And I guess what well, I want to tell you to, to speak to your point you just said, like, so I instead of like in real stand up, we can we can see. We can see how people react to the joke, but with on Zoom, we can feel it. So I, I was able to feel people and and hear their laughter through the speaker. So it felt like I, I always say I felt like I was Ray Charles doing stand up. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I can't see the people because if, if I do, it, I, my eyes would not connect with them through the camera. So they would just see me looking up instead of me looking then when they were projected on the screen. So I would have to perform directly in the camera, how like I'm looking at you guys right now, and then just say a joke, and then from the speakers hear which you like. Because if I look down at the screen, y'all would y'all would lose eye contact with the person. So I was trying to f- I figured out that technique, and it, it worked the best. Now, crowd work could change. So you talked about it live in the trap house. Those shows you've been doing. Do you, you can you can actually pull from uh, like look at Drew. He's got a nerdy Star Wars thing behind him. Love you've that. got more. You have more that you can pull from. Do, did yeah. you do crowd work in the not of course not in the album, but in the trap shows? Um, the majority of the host and other comics did. Me, I st- I stuck to most material because material. I have, I have a lot to figure out. <laughs> so sure. I, 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 audience um work, I never yeah like maybe I would just acknowledge that like you know people have their screen off and I can hear you. Maybe like I had like a joke for that to loosen them up, um one or two bits. But the, other than that, it's like it's time to get to the to the bits to the story. Good. Yeah, I'm not a big crowd work Drew. You're not really really either i like to just tell jokes man yeah i've I've been trying to add it a little in because i because i've been hanging out with some guys and done a couple shows with some guys who are just excellent man they're just they just kill it and they they can warm up a crowd it's it's a great way to start off the show but i'm terrible at it so i've just been trying to watch these guys and ask and just bug them with questions on the drive home yeah (laughs) i mean more about how you get there both both y'all if they're doing it you don't have to they they got it they they took care of it for you I mean, yeah, yeah you, there definitely are comedians at that. That is their expertise and they're just on it and they're on it on. You have to be on it in a way that does not give the audience a chance to respond or even think that you don't know what you're doing, because then they're like, hey, I came to you for entertainment. Now you're using me. Uh, All right, I guess you ain't got shit. Sure. And that's and that's how I've seen so many comics uh, bomb by that way or be t- overcome by the audience with heckles and blah, 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 because the audience is really the tool. Like, hey, you know, it's like going into a store, um, going to the store, ordering donuts and, you know, you're like, where the donuts at? And they're like, well, I thought you had the donuts, man. Wait, so I got to go back there and cook it? All right, I'll cook it. Fine. I don't have no fucking donuts. <laughs> so then they make their own recipe. Then, hey, these donuts suck. It's like, yeah, because I'm the fucking customer, dog. Like, <laughs> I'm not the Dunkin'. So, yes, that's how you have to look at it as being um, a, a art form of being a host who does a lot of crowd work. Like, they have, they're sharp. They have those materials to where it makes the audience paralyzed and having a good time. Yeah, I noticed there's some some of the crowds that you kind of interact with sometimes um, are really receptive to crowd work, or sometimes they they need to know they need to feel seen first, and mm-hmm. then they can get over it and then appreciate material or something. That there's every crowd's different, I guess, and and you just got to know what they're looking for. And if they're not a super comedy crowd, especially some of these some of these quarantine shows have been just people just want to get out of their house. Yeah, we we do open air shows at my apartment complex, so people just come for the free beer. And uh, you gotta 
yeah, it's a different animal when they're when they're not coming for, and they're not comedy fans. You got to bring them into the world and hopefully hook them, and so they'll stick to your material. It's been interesting times for that for sure. Is that what's going on in Houston? Like doing like apartment shows and stuff like that, like small little social distancing shows. Yeah, there's a couple of restaurants and bar, like restaurant type bars that have been putting on a few shows here and there, but it's still mostly dead. But um, open air shows are starting to pop up here and there. What's an open? Oh, open air show, like outside. Like outside. Right? Yeah, out there. Yeah, I have one tonight. I mean, that's good, man. I, I feel like we're all just trying to figure out how to just get our voices out there, regardless of the circumstances. And also, don't be, I think one thing that always helped me is like not be so hard on myself and not be so hard on the audience. Like, the, we're two things that are just all still trying to figure it out. And, and even you saying trying to figure out what the audience wants is like, fuck them, man. If they're just there for pizza, that's fine. Yeah. You're just there to tell jokes. Let's keep it as simple as that. And because we just get so frustrated with ourselves, like, why is this not like uh, Eddie Murphy in the 80s? <laughs> <laughs> like, why is it never going to be? Why is it not Mitch Hepburn? Like, I say <laughs> something and it kills. <laughs> that's the formula, right? No, that's not the form <laughs> at all. And that's not the reality. Well, it's, it's actually a really good uh, point because in the 80s, uh, Hedberg and, and, and Murphy and all those guys, there was no cell phones that everybody could, could retreat to. And they all want to. I mean, every couple of minutes, they have a little impulse. It's just like, oh, I got to check. I got to check it. Got to mm -hmm. check it. So yeah. they're going to be. I mean, I, I don't know how how long you've been in the game. I, I've only been for a few years. True yourself. 13. This year, this year will be thirteen. Thirteen. Have you noticed? Have you? I mean, that's enough time. Where smartphones thirteen years ago, that wasn't a thing, really. Yeah, yeah so exactly. It's yeah. changed, right? People are faces are lighting up in the shows. I mean, that, man, <laughs> that's hard. Yeah, you, I mean, I like it. I and sometimes even at that, like I, I don't get mad when people have their phone now, whatever, because like that's the era of the generation we're in and perform like they're so excited they want to take their phone out and take a picture of you or record you while you're there and i know any of the stuff i'm making i'm not holding it or hiding it so i'm i'm different to where versus a, a pete davidson where they're recording and and then news people can take it and make some negative twist on it so i mean you i it's it all depends on the level where you're at like for me it's like if they're recording and all the shit then it's fine post it on your ig story then their followers see it and then you get more people so i that's how the way i see it um but like when we're coming to like a Chappelle and all them, like, yeah, lock it up. Enjoy the moment. I mean, that's his rules. That's his house rules. And, and you got to respect it. Every comedian is different. Well, you're I think you kind of get the vibe from some of your comedy. What, I, what I've seen thus far is that you really lean into that millennial mindset. You're you, you actually do a lot of or at least some material that that is um, hmm. referencing that point of view. You do the the mail bit about who opens uh, their mail anymore uh, right? word, yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that, which is very 2020 young person thinking. And uh, I would assume that that connects really well with the younger audience because you're right there with them. Yeah. And and, um, and I think it's going to be something where we're trying to get the youth down the line to get into this art form, because I, I don't remember stand up young. Like, <laughs> I think probably like college. I remember seeing I always loved laughing and seeing like maybe Eddie Murphy and Pryor and all them because like the raw tape. I ran that to the ground in college in my mm -hmm. college dorm. But <laughs> at that time, I didn't know there was actual clubs and plays to perform with. And then when I was starting out, like I'm a fucking comedian at a prom show. Like what? <laughs> like I would kill my fucking school if they ever signed us <laughs> up for stand up at prom. It was like, fam, just let me go in the clubs and get lost. I mean, that's part <laughs> of the life. <laughs> so it's a different generational era for me. And I'm just trying to like, Hey, this is the, uh, and I got, I have to give praise to Jackie Cation because, like, I remember watching her stand up on Comedy Central and Conan and how she's talking about nerd stuff. And I'm just like, oh, so we can talk about anything uh, as long as we can try to make it funny. Okay. Like, because we always thought there's these rules of stand up of like, I'm a black comic. All right. Here's my black and white jokes. Here's my, I'm the only nigga in the room. Here's my other uh, <laughs> women feet are crazy. And, uh, you know, or vice versa for a white comic, like, ah, I'm a rapist, and, and uh, the other one, uh, oh, I'm racist too, and uh, are for, uh, the women are tripping. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, you can talk about anything, man, and you can you can go as far or you can go as back, because I think what we're starting to figure out to utilize, like, when we have that mic and those people engaging us, is timeless. 
it's timeless. You could bring up anything. As long as it's interesting and funny, man, that, that time is your time. And have fun. Take take them on the ride. Yeah. Wow. So there was like a moment when just the world opened up to you. And that's when you're like, I can do this. Like, I, I, I can write about anything. And you do, man. You've got so much material out there. I mean, multiple. how many albums do you got? And then all these show show writing credits. Uh, Four albums and one, one special on Amazon, which is not yeah. Amazon Prime. It's on um, BET Plus right now uh, called You Guys Are Dope. And that's mm-hmm. on video demand. And four, yeah, four albums. That's a lot of time. Uh, so you obviously do quite a bit of writing uh, as we get into sort of the heart of what we talk about in the show. Cool. Uh, tell us, man, how how does Nori Davis write comedy? Woo! A lot of bombing. A lot of bombing. <laughs> yeah. A lot of not listening to my inner audience voice. Mm-hmm. You know how you say a joke in your head and the audience in your head is like, hell yeah, that's funny. Yep. <laughs> ah! Applause break, right? <laughs> Mike no, they are yeah. liars. Yeah. That is your confidence egging you on to do it, but you have to like go out there and perform it and see how it reacts to people that don't know you or your fans or whoever they are. So my writing process is 50% on paper and the other 50 is like on stage. So it's like definitely having the bits, having the structure and having the topic and then just the words from brain to mouth to mic coming out and timing all the you know all the elements of stand-up performance and um shaping it there and then once i get it down to uh to where i like it then now it's just about being consistent Mm. with that bit in different audiences people that don't know me bikers uh black people racist uh um uh people at a dog show people at a cat show you know like like oh did this hit consistently with all those different people that's crazy all right i guess this is a bit (laughs) you know or this this is some good or this one just hits this audience that's fine and i'll just have that for me so it does go back to the structure of like i guess you definitely read about how seinfeld does it like you have your pit your jokes are like your your pictures and if they bat, if they're batting good, not be pitchers, they're your players. If they're batting good, you know, you put them in there, they bat in low, you take them out. And it's that uh, interchanging of the bits. What I do for me of, um, of like, okay, this one's consistently hit and put this one here. It had this one's the closer, this one's the opener, and then the middle is whatever. Cause the real rule of stand up is, uh, I guess this is for your listeners too. Uh, always start, start out, start out strong. And strong in the middle, nobody gives a fuck. Yeah, I don't remember you at all. Uh, so, yeah. if you even bomb your last joke, it's okay. Just make sure you are performing for you because you know you're gonna be back. Mm-hmm. So the audience don't remember you. They don't, they only remember you when you're great. They don't remember you when you're bad. Unless you're famous, then you're. Yeah, you're yeah. Bad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but if you ain't famous, you good. You don't have like even me. I work hard and everything, but I, you know, I can have like a bad bit, whatever. But it's not like I'm. Um, Kanye West worthy of content, <laughs> you know, like oh Kanye, Kanye could have had a bad song. It was just a bad song, and then uh, you know he's everywhere for like this is what he believes. It's just like no, I'm just trying out Blue Lives Matter song. I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it'd be cool, but I was all right. Damn, I, I was just trying to make a mistake. I don't know. I don't know why some people be in the studio and recording it. And so now it's our content. You dig? So to bring it back down to a lower scale of a comic, you listen to this, be courageous in the middle, start off strong. and mm. strong. Drew, I always fuck that up, man. I always I do this thing where I'm most excited about the new thing that I wrote. Yeah. I'm so excited that I got to start with it. And I always fuck that up because you don't just don't do that. It's yeah, yeah, not, no. Don't do it. And so, words, I, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They don't I, know you yet. Yeah, just let, like, like you got to. Just like an introduction to meeting somebody new, which is also hard. It's like the same thing with the audience. Like, hey, this is who I am. And you do that one bit, you know, that like gets like a chuckle or it, you can kind of feel out like, oh, OK, these um, they laugh at this joke. Then, all right, they're going to enjoy the rest. And if they don't, then you're like, all right, I know where I'm at. I, let me just get through this shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the, this one in. I really like the balance of your perspective, though. I think the fact that you're you're very hardcore about being who you are and sharing what you're, you're not pandering. You're, but obviously, we have as comics, we have to do what gets reaction from the crowd or from the audience. But yeah. at the same time, it's you. You seem to put a lot of weight into what you really find interesting and funny, and it, you're not trying to create bits for for the audience per se it's for you but just also 
finding the stuff that you love that also the crowd loves. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, no, that sounds great, Drew. Yeah, it, it's to the point of like. I guess I said before, like the blueprints are out there. So now it's just trying to figure out your own design for your own blueprint. You know, there's no need to, we're not re, re, reinventing, you know, we're rewriting, we're rewriting for the next generations for ourselves and the next generation to see like, oh, this is how it works for them now. Now, how can it work for me and the people around me and that audiences that I attract or who I attract to and, and, um, and find that balance of just never, definitely never losing yourself because that's what makes you, you. Yeah, I love that's a huge part of my comedy is a lot of biographical stuff right now. Mm -hmm. and I love sharing that, but I'm kind of a newer comic. So I feel like that's kind of like where you maybe somewhere a lot of people start. So um, I, there's a lot of me in my set, but there uh, you go. You can be tempted to be like, oh, the other comics are getting laughs with this kind of material. Maybe I should try that, too. But I, I like to I, I just love the fact that you're so big about self-expression. What's in your head? What's in your heart? Who you are as a person that resonates with me a lot. Thanks, man. Hell yeah. I mean, shit, look at social media, man. My profile, you got your profile, and I think there's no wrongdoing in the audience to like or follow both. Yeah. <laughs> it all depends on them. That's it. So um, it's we got to like really start understanding things that it's out of our control and, and not take it personally. Just like definitely just be the best voice you can be. Right. And after this, we can start a Ninja Turtle podcast. It's going to be awesome. Yes. We'll make it happen. I know. Yeah. Maybe you can convince me to get on podcast. I'm just like, yeah. I just never get, I don't know. I just, I feel just doing stand up and I don't know. I, don't, I think I get bored of podcasts. I'm not anti podcast. I'm just, uh, I don't know. I just don't. I, just, well, for, I feel like it's not me. For us, it was, you know, we're, we're up and coming newer comics and we miss those green room conversations that we used to have access to when, when, when comics like yourself would come through Houston or uh, yeah. you know, we just don't get that anymore. So we weren't able to learn and we're like, we can't be the only ones. So might as well, all, you know, learn and share. And, uh, and so far it's, it's been on a good clip, a good, good growth path. And certainly, fuck it, if nobody listened, I've done a tremendous amount of learning and, and more writing because of this. So. That's a clever neurotic way to do it, brother. <laughs> neurotic, yeah. <laughs> that's fair. Oh, but that's the way to do it, though. Like, just to hang and hanging around people. But, like, it, it, this would be the same way if you moved to New York and you had your own show. That's that's what a lot of comics do. And that's the, that's the smartest way to do it because we always love performing. <laughs> and we love stage time. And if you have a venue in the show, we'll come do it. And so this is just the online version of that and it's also a great platform to build your following and keep going so yes that's it's very smart what would you so we've talked to a few different comics about this and since you're already kind of new york native it might be different for you but you know when's the right when's the right time to make that move to a big market to to put yourself out there did you have a strategy when you kind of did that my uh because i'm like so i learned right there in yonkers which is like 30, 40 minutes right outside the city. So my my thing was just, I could just commute back and forth and it gave me a break from the craziness in New York. So I'm different. But for a comic who is like the Midwest of bumblefuck, I say definitely, <laughs> I say definitely, yes, yeah, start your own show there because your market is within your town. I mean, think about it as like a rapper or, or an artist like that where they start getting popping within their own town. So build up a hot show, build up your own knitting factory in within your town, within your shop, inviting people, have social media, kids will come out, something to hang out. And then once you build from there, you get like a tight 15, whatever minutes, then bring that show to New York or bring it to LA or, and that's when you know, you'll make that growth when you start building within your own town. Um, I was right close to New York, so I just built it in New York. But if, if it was me, then like there's a great scene in DC, the Alamo Draft, the uh, Alamo Draft House, and um, uh, still have the fucking big room I do there. They have they they have their own great scene too in Washington DC. I forgot my brain just went rant rant. Uh, <laughs> and there's definitely one in Portland. There's a great scene in Houston. Houston's building, y'all building too. Um, and did the festival out there I think last year. Mm -hmm. Um, so I say definitely build there. And then if you want to go for more standard performances, New York, if you want to go for more writing on a TV show, acting LA, mm -hmm. but now we factor in the pandemic. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> that was all before. <laughs> I love, I love your point 
about building up your following in your hometown because guess what those are going to be your biggest supporters those are your ride or dies those are the people Mm -hmm. that are they become like your rocket fuel so even when you move out of there you they're still behind you and they're still sharing your content and they're they're excited about you thousands of miles away depending on where you live and so having that base uh, and then, and then, and then sometimes it's something, something nice to be able to go back to them and be able to, to recharge and be like, oh yeah, this is where it all started, uh, cool. to go back to your hometown and perform. So that's, that's, that's really good advice to, to, but, but you gotta be doing something is to your, build a show, get out, you know, start a show. If you're serious about this shit, start a show and start there and start building and get your material and get to writing fit your 15 minute set and performing it. Yeah. Yep. And once you do that, man, you'll you'll definitely know when you're ready to move out and venture out. So until then, be patient and just be patient with yourself and keep grinding, keep going. Yeah, now might be a good time to go ahead and get into um, the clip that we're going to watch. I I think you know which one we've grabbed. You want to typically we'd ask you to give us a little setup about the show. Mm hmm. So it's a, I think it's your Comedy Central stand-ups. Is that what it is? Yeah. Um, uh, this is the math one. Which bit is this? Yeah, yeah. The first one, uh, Boston. How about you working at Boston Market, and then you get into to math. Uh huh. Word. Yeah. So this set was a uh, Comedy Central featuring, where they were just featuring comics doing yeah. ten to fifteen minute sets, and they cut them up for their social media platform. And um, yeah, I re- those bits I was saving for like a special, but I was just like, well, this is sort of a special. So like, let me just give my best and it's going to be living out there instead of just like throwing material away or redoing it. So I just, I put that shit, I've been, I've been cooking on that, those bits for a little bit for like a couple months within the scene. So uh, they, they looked and felt ready to me. So I just laid them out. <laughs> and then there it is. Where was, where did you perform? Do you remember where it was? Brooklyn. Yeah, this is uh, in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. This is, la- was it last, late last year? Something uh, like that? Yep. This was uh, late last year. Yep. Very cool. Let's cue it up. You ready? I'm Let's a father. I have a daughter. She's seven years old. I always figure out how to protect, you know what I'm saying? Like, Because I don't believe in guns. I'm more of a bow and arrow, man. <laughs> I don't know why black people never got into archery. We could have killed that shit. <laughs> Change the narrative. Imagine watching The Wire. <laughs> somebody stepped to somebody's block like, yo, this is my block. <laughs> A word? Archers! <laughs> Cops pulled up. What happened? I don't know. A nigga called an arrow. I don't know. I don't know, he was talking all this, Arrow came. I was like, oh, yo. I don't know, officer, I was standing right here the whole time. I don't know. Yeah, she's seven in the second grade and barely got through the first grade because of math. Yo, if you love math, I salute you, but math should be an elective. (laughs) Like, you should choose to take that shit. Because people don't understand, that's the only subject you're introduced to problems. <laughs> you just got there and you got problems. <laughs> Gym you play, art you draw, signs you discover, math is like, solve this fucking problem. <laughs> you done with that, here's another problem. You done with that, these are all problems. <laughs> you like, I'm six years old, I just got here. Why do I have all these problems? What did I do? <laughs> they ask me why the kids are depressed. Math, nigga. That's why. <laughs> Math. It's the first time you introduced the stress and the anxiety at six. What? <laughs> we all been there, man. You remember those equations? <laughs> you got nine apples and Dustin takes away two and Mike has three and Will has four. How many apples do you have left? Who are these people taking on my apples? I don't know them, I'm six, I just got here. And you got the cast of Stranger Things eating my food? Dustin doesn't even have teeth, why does he want my apple? Oh man. Hey, all right, we are back. Oh man. <laughs> and we're back. Uh, so the, the archery bit, uh, I, 
that that must I'm I'm assuming that that came to you uh, or part of that bit came to you while watching movies, right? I mean that that that's that's all of us being in the movie. Archers, and you have, you have that stone cold look. It's just the. Is there a specific movie that that came to you from, or is, is this? I'll say probably like Robin Hood Men in Tight. Nice, uh, and, nice, featuring Dave Chappelle. Hell yeah, and, and definitely uh, Game of Thrones. Like probably refreshed it for me, and just watching sure. all the archers, and then just taking. Yeah, I like to do that. My my brain does that. Just taking two different worlds and meshing them up together, and seeing how that would look, and it just makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah that's how that came yeah yeah definitely a lot of movies I, that's all i did was just watch in front of the tv watching movies watching tv shows still doing that to this day like that's my niche instead of like reading mad books i'm like reading i'm like watching every show even like cleaning or listening it's just like tv's white noise in my background just watching it and absorbing it that way yeah, I think that one thing that steps out that stands out in all of the all of your material um, is one passion. Like I love when you get riled up. That's like <laughs> there's there's nothing better than to hear your voice change and you get excited or angry or whatever when you emote. It's powerful and it's like is that is that a skill you you always had or and did you always do that in your stand up or is that something you developed over time? I think that's when I'm starting to develop. And you're probably like the third or fourth person I heard saying that, like, yo, when you get motion, your voice starts changing. And I didn't know, like, oh, that's me. Like, oh, okay, that's my voice. That's my, mm -hmm. I guess, Gaffigan doing the hot pockets. Like, I don't know why she did that. <laughs> <laughs> there's that and there's the Kevin Hart talking fast. Da, 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 da. And I guess that's my thing. But I guess I, I would never know that until you say that. So I just... I just know it when I'm performing, that's the part I get pissed. <laughs> that's the part I just get pissed and passionate and yeah. and yeah, my voice just goes in high octave and there I go. Um, yeah, so that's the part of like, rem I remember the word that activates the passion behind that joke and then that's where it goes. And I just do that over and over again. Nice. Well, it works. It draws people in. I think it like it really creates a, a moment of tension, uh, and you just use that emotion so powerfully. I think that's a that's a thing that any I mean, any comic, you know, I feel like we start to learn that. Oh man, when I share when I talk about stuff, I'm really passionate about. I just talk about it differently, mm. and it's more connective. Yeah, dude. Thanks, Drew. Yeah, never heard that before. I appreciate that. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what it is. I guess through all this, just all of us just keep doing it until we find our voice. We finally find out what our voice is and, and the level of like between, I guess like, you know, with Miles, I, I say like comedy is kind of like an instrument where the audiences are saxophone and, you know, we play them. They are our instrument. We need them. So uh, we, we got to just keep going until we find that Miles Davis sound, that who we are. So we keep performing and we keep bombing, taking all the L's and all the W's. And then you start to develop your own musical tune. That makes yeah. sense. <clears throat> Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. No, the audience is our saxophone. That's perfect. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I might even put it into our, our promotional materials. That's good. Uh, the uh, but you're right though your TV thing you were talking about earlier you mentioned The Wire you mentioned Stranger Things so and you've got your perspective you're I like Drew you emote when you emote uh, so yeah. you're you're That's able hard, to right? Is that connect I don't know uh, you're <laughs> I love it you're able I'm to <laughs> I emote <laughs> <laughs> you're able to you're able to connect with them and then find something relatable and then you even tied it into like a you know this is why the kids are depressed so there's something going on societally that I can relate to uh, so you're contrasting these two times and then you're saying something about today so I, I think all of those things brought together shows uh i guess your uh strength as a comedian so so very well put together with this material thank you man yeah it's just it's after a while when we, when we're putting the gets i get yeah like breaking down the bits right so let's break down a bit is where there is this consciousness and subconsciousness so of writing this thesis paper <laughs> of, of of make connecting the dots of like because we are comedians is the strength of being philosophers and truth tellers and i mean look how we all still praise the uh, the honorable Chappelle as our uh, <laughs> as our stand up guru because he is just a master of like 
putting these bits together and some and would when I see him perform his is like on the fly and it's like what <laughs> so, <laughs> it's it's like so he will forever be our avatar if you say if I can say he is our airbender but we are as comics we are our own elements our own avatars ourselves and um different elements of trying to figure out our way of bringing together th- this getting rid of the smoke and mirrors and like this is what's happening right now you know and and it connects to my story this way and we bring it together and that's the beautiful art form of it all so um yeah i i try to do that in my bits and and sometimes it connects that way sometimes it doesn't but when it comes together it, it's uh it's a beautiful thing true i'm gonna go, i'm gonna go on to the next part of the set Let's do y'all it. y'all ready Yes, yeah, sir. We have issues we trying to get figured out, man. Like one of, like being black, my issue was like police reform. I want that fixed, but that's hard to do, man, because like the cops have unions and they have paid administrative leave. Paid administrative leave is too dope. <laughs> it's too good. Can you imagine that? You shoot somebody in the face and your boss is like, go home. <laughs> you tripping. It's like, I wish I had that shit when I worked at Boston Market. I was shot everybody in the fucking face. What? My boss got my back? What? All those old people changing their orders? Let me get stream beans. Never mind, put in mashed potatoes. No, take that out. Put the stream beans back in. No, what the fuck? Oh, I was scared. Who put streamers and mass men the streets back in the same cup? That's a monster. I feared for my life. All right, look, man, just go home. Do I get paid? Yes. I'll see you later. You let me know how it work out, boss. Come on. As we, we, every time that happens, we go to that. It's so frustrating. I hope black people get justice before cows do. That Impossible Burger's hitting. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Plant-based meat? What in Subway? KFC? Are you killing me? There's people out there. There's cows out there like, yo, we coming up, man. <laughs> we doing it, man. <laughs> Last week I should have been dead, but I'm alive. <laughs> I'm in Whole Foods shopping with you. They still pull on my nipples and shit, but I have rights. <laughs> oh. uh, I love that. The, that end part. Thank you, guys. The last part that the last part there was one that jumped out at me where the cows shopping at Whole Foods. You know what I thought of? And I don't know if you're a fan of this, Drew and, and, and Nori, but uh, Gary Larson. Y'all know Gary Larson, the far Gary, side? Gary Larson. Say it again. Gary Larson you, from where? G- Gary Larson, the far side. So if you don't know that, you y'all might want you want to check that out, man. If you come when it comes to cow humor, that guy has covered almost everything. Not not what you hit here, but he he's got he was he's been doing it since like the seventies. He's like comic yeah. strip guy. But that's what that's what I thought of was, was oh, Gary Larson. Okay. Those those calendars and the books, the far side, all those little. Oh, I see it. Yeah, right. Oh hell yeah, yeah. I used to all this. I used to love this shit. See, I just didn't know that's it was funny shit. Gary Larson. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that's some of the, my early comedy from as a kid. And then the other thing I thought of, y- y'all don't have, do y'all have Chick Fil A in New York? Yeah, uh, n- yes, we j- yeah we got we got you. Not like we not like we got it down here, but like they they have <laughs> they have like this whole marketing campaign where they have the cows like telling you to eat more fowl, eat more chicken, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And that's the other thing I thought of. Yeah, <laughs> marketing uh, genius, eat more fowl. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah uh, the whole campaign of them to eat the chicken, right? Like, anyway, where did where did your bit come from? I, I'm th- throwing everybody else's stuff out there. No, I love that. I love that shit. Um, my bit comes from. Um, I I guess I could. I just put my foot in the hooves, <laughs> the hooves of the cow, and I literally got jealous of like the attention. And life changing choices are happening in their lives and people's diet versus like black lives. And I'm just like, so, uh, damn, they're, they're getting more traction than us. And then uh, that's where my passion comes from. I just literally just put my foot in their hopes. And if I was them, which they don't know, 
it'd be kind of cool. Like, all right, well, people starting to like, you know, do alternative eating. So I, I'm going to be in this fucking cage for like, I don't know, a couple more years longer <laughs> because there are still places that do love beef. So yeah. it's two, nine years later, probably a couple months longer, you know? So I still think that's a win for them <laughs> versus our wins is just it's just still black trauma porn out there of like not any injustice are physically happening period so it's it, it's just that it's just de- definitely that contrast of like come on and that's where the passion comes from yeah so that's um just becoming one of the animals <laughs> do you have uh so one thing that you clearly are super strong at is these act outs. You, you do put mm. yourself in the hooves. <laughs> you put yourself, uh, you know, you, you bring a great premise and then you live it out on stage. That is so great. And something I am personally terrible at. I narrate too much and I don't <laughs> act out enough. How, do you have a strategy to help yourself create those moments and those characters? Like, what do you do to, to get there? What if, if I'm having problems getting there, do you have any advice on how to take your stuff for more just narrating a joke to acting it out? Yeah. Um, let let go. Whatever the hell you're scared of, let go. Let uh, go how you think you're going to look, how you're going to sound, and how people are going to react to you. You've it, clearly it, been talking to my therapist, and I don't yeah. say that at all. <laughs> <laughs> at the core of it, to get to act out for somebody else, I can imagine. Yeah, like I said, I can put I put my shoes in your pants, whatever the hell you're wearing. I don't know. And, and you're or your crock. Nailed it. I do wear vans. Like there we go. <laughs> you know, man, guys. Good eye, good your vans, and I'm like, yeah, you're holding on to something, bro. And like, it doesn't matter. Let go. Cause like the, the one of the things I've been learning, I'm still doing now, like, is I uh, that keep doing and pushing towards things that scare the shit out of you. And you know, mm. and once you do, you will find like, oh wow, there's literally this tax, but yeah, the grass is greener. Like I didn't even know this was all over here. I had all this potential within me. So, um, uh, cause I'm right now I'm writing a pilot and it's just scaring the fuck out of me, but it's, I'm getting to some places in scenes of act outs and visuals of, I can see like, Oh, this is fun. And let me just keep venturing into this part. So what I do with the act outs on stand up is the same aspect of like, just letting go, having fun and, uh, like, picturing it and like hey let me let me paint it for you a little bit more and uh boom and uh and then always going back to like prior and eddie Chappelle, patrice and really yeah patrice did act outs too like everybody had their own subtle way of act outs and it's just it just it's just um it's just that cherry on top of the cake, man. You just need that. You just need that nice presentation. You know, we love iPhones, but their presentation, wow. And I just think that's what the act out is for a joke, man. Just, just give it that nice white fucking box. So when people open it up, they're like, oh, this is it. So an act out for a joke is definitely like that nice presentation of the whole setup, the punchline. And here it is. And um, now, I mean, that sounds like it's in line with the very first thing you said was bombing. You have to be okay with just, I guess, just eating it when you, you put yourself out there in an act out. And I, maybe I'm afraid of, maybe I am a little afraid to put myself mm. out there. So you're vulnerable. Yes. It, yeah. Man. Act out and the audience hates it. It is like, Ooh, it's soul crushing for the moment for sure. Man, we could do a whole podcast on bombing itself. Like every <laughs> emotional inflection you feel within and how time just stops and you can see a bullet and you can see <laughs> you can see the person putting their popcorn in their mouth very slow and then hearing the crunch and the- <laughs> just falling so flat so like there's no laugh but the reaction to your joke was a punch it was a popcorn crunch and <laughs> it, it's that so but when she, there's the beauty of, there's the beauty of, of of that because it just tells you like okay that's not it you get the satisfaction results right there like that's not it yeah. i know it hurts keep going keep going you're gonna find it you're gonna and believe in yourself you're gonna find it and uh that's the process and it's, it's a beautiful process and i think it that's what makes the art form last forever ever because it's authentic it cannot be multiple it can't be generated it can't be you can't put in viral and you know uh do this reaction no it's yeah. it's it's authentic it's real and it's it needs a, it needs a reaction from the uh, audience you need that absolutely man that's that's a that's a tough lesson but definitely a good one yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
It's the, it's the, it's the way of the stand-up. It is. Well, this is a, a this material is a little ahead of its time, obviously, with everything going on with the resurgence of Black Lives Matter and everything that happened just months after this. Uh, I'm curious, you know, great advice on the act. Outs. I'm curious, again, how you draw these contrasts, how you take something like a like a police shooting and being put on administrative leave to working at Boston Market and serving old people green beans. Like it's yeah. just that is such a stretch to me. But it's so it, it's so beautiful because it's it, and you bring it into this time, this moment, because, I mean, that was still something going on. It's not like it wasn't happening. It's very yeah. much happening. It just kind of mm-hmm. came to a head. But like, how, what are you doing to pull these together? Uh, is there a part of your process? Is it just a light bulb that goes on that, that connects the dots? How is there any way to stimulate that or? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stimulate me. I'll do it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, I, <laughs> I, yeah, I watch a lot of porn, and yeah. you know, then and then I watch, I go to Boston Market, and no. um, combo. It, you really, you really work there. Or in the did Boston you really Market? work there? Yeah, no, I really did. Yeah, I really so, did. So maybe it, it started. Did it, some of it started with the emotion of like this fucking job, like this is let this. So you remember that feeling of that work, and exactly. then l- later relating it to some societal thing right yeah so i mean yeah you, you're definitely picking up on it it is like reaching back into my past and my my experiences but then also conscious of what's happening now and it's just this mixing ball of like hey these two variables i mean you you see it in the game every day of uh <laughs> probably sudoku or uh, crossword puzzles or um uh, what's that fucking game where you have to um guess the words they're all jumbled and you have to like pass the pattern i've been seeing the old black women play this game even my <laughs> ex played this game like i hated word, it word search yeah it's like a word or like the words are in a circle and like uh, like f g a and then you have to like um connect them Uh-oh. and it will guess the word within the puzzle you gotta make uh, a pentagram and pray to say yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> For this podcast there's that game it's basically <laughs> fucking brain is that just with events and then I'm just trying to connect some dots and I was like, Oh, this might work. That might work. And, and I go out there and try it and see what the best one comes up with. And it, there definitely is the light bulb effect, uh, Brian of just like, Hey, this one. Okay. This might be it. That's a good, actually, that's a good point. It sounds like you don't play it cause you don't remember the name of it, but like, do yeah. you have like things that you do to keep your mind sharp word games and things? Do you mess with any of that? Oh, uh, I'm doing this garden game, but now is at a part where they want me to buy shit, so I stopped doing that. Uh, <laughs> it's like trying to fix the garden, and you have to like do the uh, you have to do the puzzles of of matching the four strawberries, you know, four combination things together. Uh, I do like your next special is going to be really interesting. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm like trying to figure out how to make air bun- airbenders funny um right now and also all this black trauma blah 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 it, it's it's all coming together oh and the toxic relationship oh man trauma yeah. it, it's like trauma is just yeah. so fucking interesting man it's like <laughs> my my ex like made like a whole uh album of our relationship like, like she turned to a singer and she uh made an album and i listened to it, it was like so triggering it's just like I'm just so pissed off. Like, who who gave this bitch beats? Like, don't you know <laughs> what I've been through? Like, no, no, man. Like, I need to talk to the production. I need to talk to them. like don't don't give people like this a platform. Not everybody has <laughs> a platform to tell their story. All right. Uh, now you know what it feels like to date Taylor Swift, man. This is like next. Level. Yeah, that's right. A Taylor Swift or be like an R. Kelly victim. I don't know. Be, I get it. It's just like stop. <laughs> Um, so and we're going that now. That's my thing. So like, go back to your question of um, it is that uh of of scrolling and just taking a lot of information. I do that a lot. I do like listen to, like podcasts. Mm. I do scroll on Twitter. I do scroll on I, I get Instagram and I watch every show. Like I told you guys. So that's where yeah you'll get those elements of like Game of Thrones or archery. And then Boston Martin and you know, all that stuff like that. Like even on the trap house, I, I could finally I talked about Dragon Ball Z uh and my thoughts on that. Yeah. That was really fun. And then Ninja Turtles on my Comic Central. Like I always wanted to do that and got to meet Eastman. So that was great. Uh, <laughs> my hero, awesome. Kevin Eastman, one of the uh creators of the Ninja Turtles. Um, so you know, just living out my dreams in my 30s, man. Just trying to like make bits of 
motherfuckers I can hopefully meet my heroes as a kid. <laughs> well, it sounds like subtext is like super important to you. And um, you, it sounds like you might start there sometimes. Just curious. Have you ever used the strategy of going like, hey, this is a really important thing to me. Yes. Now let me see how can I write a joke around it. Is that does your process work in that way sometimes? You got it. Yep. That's that is another huge process for mine, which is trying to figure out what is a topic I could take that has that's taboo that hasn't been out there at all, and let me see if I can conquer it to be the one to like, hey, this is a starting platform and talking about this topic, and anybody else can take it wherever they want. Versus what all the greats have done for us, like. Prior, this is how you talk about white people. Or Carlin, this is how you talk about the world. <laughs> this is, how, you know, uh, and um, Rodney Dangerfield, this is how you talk about yourself. Uh, <laughs> I get no respect, you know. Like it's it's excellent. It's like these people wrote it for us, so it's like we can we can be our own uh, trendsetters of like, hey, I want to talk about this in my life or this in my life, and they gave us a little bit of blueprint, but we take it, we write our own, and then we just go from there. So yeah. Like Very good. I'm going to go ahead and get this plane landed, Nori. So okay. the last last thing we do is we put you on the spot a little bit. We started with you dying, so this is going to work. It's going to go full circle. Right. Uh, we, we call this last laugh. So what is the joke that you would want put on your tombstone? This is your last joke, man. Oh, shit. That's, <laughs> fire. that's, a, that's a great segment. <laughs> put on my tombstone. Um, <clears throat> the joke to put on my tombstone would be, once I heal my inner child, it's over for you hoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. We're always working on ourselves. I'm dead, so That's yeah. Deep. That's, deep. Uh, <laughs> That's good. I just love the way you think. I think I, I think it helps. It's going to help a lot of people as they hear this episode. It's helping me. It's confirming a lot of my suspicions. I love just the mentality of hey. It starts in us. What are we passionate about? Turn that, use that as fuel for comedy. Don't worry about what the audience necessarily wants. It's about what you're bringing to them. That's right. That's right. Hell yeah. That's just the way. Think about yourself as we are. It sucks, but in this capitalism country, which it is, you know, love America, but we are our own little business. And, you know, like, hey, what is our little Chick-fil-A joke that keeps people coming back? Or what's our little, what's our Big Mac? And from there, you build, you're not going to find it at first, but you just got to keep building and just keep believing yourself. And then that's the great greatness of comedy of uh, uh, stand-up comedy the art form is that you will be able to find who you are within the industry and either you're a stand-up you're a producer you're a writer all that stuff all came from stand-up and for me vice versa when i started mine came from improv and then i went to stand up oh. but once you start venturing into comedy there's so many other doors and you don't have to be so fucking pissed off that that one door doesn't work for you. Very <laughs> <laughs> yeah. good. I put, I put your website down there, noradavis.com. Of course you've had at Nora Davis. Uh, you said mentioned Instagram. Is that your Twitter handle as well? Yes, sir. It's Twitter, Instagram, all of it. My only fans app, my porn site. Now. Nah, yeah. ah, so nah. make sure y'all get out there and follow him. Just an incredible comic. So much material. You're like a joke machine, man. It's been awesome watching your career and, uh, thanks for doing the show. Wish the wish the best for you. Hey, well, man. Thank you. This shit'll this shit'll be over, man. You'll see. It's it's coming. We'll I'll see. be in Houston, baby. We'll, we'll be pulling up, man. We'll just have our mask on. We'll, That's we'll, right. Hey, we'll, come down here. Look us up, man. We got shows going on down here. Come, get, get on that plane. Let's go. I will, uh, man. Definitely for sure. But thank you, Nori, Nori Davis, for joining us. Thank you all for listening. We gonna get out of here, y'all. Uh, get out there and tell some jokes. This has been breaking down bits. Thanks for listening to Breaking Down Bits. You can keep in touch or get more when you follow at Breaking Down Bits on social media. Visit the website BreakingDownBits.com or shoot us an email at BreakingDownBits at gmail.com.